Octopus holds a celebrated place in the cuisines of Asia, the Mediterranean, Mexico, and parts of Africa. It's hugely popular in Japan and considered a delicacy. People enjoy it as sashimi, simmered, deep fried, and as the street food, takoyaki. Not all cultures, however, have loved this fruit of the sea, some calling it the devilfish. But former non fans are coming around. Thanks to the ongoing global appetite for Japanese cuisine, as well as the meat's health benefits, low in calories and high in protein. With demand, the volume of catches in Japan has been declining. Now the country is increasingly depending on imports, which involve extra expenses. Add in rising global consumption, and this translates to skyrocketing prices. Against this backdrop, a Japanese research institute in Hiroshima set out to find a way to farm the animal, long considered a challenging proposition. Shinchi Masaaki is an octopus fisher in Onomichi, facing the Seto Inland Sea, a major fishing ground for the mollusk. <laughs> He had set about 300 pots lined with nets, as well as other devices. But... <laughs> about 10 years ago, he would have seen an average of 30. What's behind the decline? Experts point to factors like warming waters from climate change that have led to food source decline and an increase in fish that prey on them. Amid these circumstances, an initiative was launched on the remote Momoshima Island off Onomichi. It's headed by the National Fisheries Research Institute, which has been developing techniques for cultivating octopus for about 10 years. One of the reasons why octopus aquaculture is extremely difficult is that most die soon after hatching. This shows a newly hatched octopus larva attempting to feed. Unable to withstand the weight of the feed, both hatchling and fodder sink. But the larvae have a habit of rising near the water's bright surface, and so back up they go. Because of this, they miss the feed at the bottom of the tank, becoming weak and dying. So the research team looked to tank redesign to rectify the situation, and they hit on water flow. By creating an upward flow through water jetting onto the tank floor, the hatchlings could easily access food. By adjusting feed and other techniques, the team achieved a survival rate over 90% in raising juveniles. But when one problem ends, another begins. As the octopuses grew, they started to feed on each other. Each little octopus is placed in its own kind of cubicle. This prevents them from seeing each other, and that helps reduce cannibalism. As a result, raising the young octopuses is easier, even beyond 60 days after hatching. The team is hoping to see its octopus farming technology commercially viable by the end of fiscal 2028.
The passion and efforts by researchers as well as fisheries are making breakthroughs in techniques for farming octopus. At the same time, though, there's a whole discussion on whether to farm or not the highly sensitive and intelligent animal. Seems the topic will be on the table for quite a while.